Welcome to my Time Warp comic review number two. Um, see in front of me right here is the Tomb of Dracula number one. Um, I can remember the very first time I saw Dracula movie. I'm not sure why my parents thought it was appropriate to allow an eight years old to sit there and watch Dracula movie, but it scared the the heck out of me. Uh, I think I had nightmares about that movie. Uh, but I liked it. You know, I you know it's a, it's a good scare, and uh, I don't think um, it shy me away from the entire character. Uh, certainly, you know, um, I remember it was a, a Hammer film. I think if you are familiar with. Um, early 70s, late 60s Dracula movie. I think uh, Hammer put out a series of Dracula movie with Christopher Lee as Dracula and that was uh, the bit of music and uh, voice that you hear at the start of this video. It was a, a, a clip from um, one of the Hammer movie and the theme song of Dracula in those movies. Um, so if we step back in time in early 72, if this book came out, uh, no doubt, you know, what drew, what drew me to collect comic books as a teenager was a superhero genre. So, you know, other um, genre at the time like uh, war comics or western or horror may not be in my focus but if I see this cover on the stand I would definitely buy it for many reasons um, number one is issue number one uh, and uh, sure I tend to pick up at least number one of every title just to take a look if not at least I have a number one doesn't have to be uh, something that I might collect for the rest of the series but it's a number one, why not? On top of that, you have this unbelievable, beautiful cover. Once again, Marvel got me. It hooked me with my favorite colors, black, red, and yellow. If I see this on the rack, you betcha, I will buy it. What's always strange for me is only until, I guess, the late 70s that artists decided to put you know the initial or, or something on the cover to let you know who drew it um, but in the 60s and for sure in the early 70s as well as a through the mid 70s you know you can't really tell uh, if there's any kind of signature or mark to say who drew or inked this cover, but you know, for those who are familiar with um, New Adams, you probably guess that this could be him because it's so beautiful. I mean, very few people can uh, draw this way, and so let's see if if I pick up this book and bring it home, what would I think? I do have a reader copy here, so let's use that instead of uh, my nice copy. It's always good to use a reader's copy in case some kind of mishap happens when you turn the page. Anyhow, right away, wow, I am impressed, you know, being a big Gene Colon fan myself. That's a beautiful splash page. I love it when 
uh, artists do this on the splash page when they drew text in this way it's just beautiful and the whole eerie dark vibe of the, the splash page very appropriate I love it let's see who get the credit Jerry Conway is a writer here and Gene Colan is the artist um, let's see it doesn't say much about who ink this book so I'm gonna guess that Gene Colan ink this book it's just a hunch let's see all this text here I think it's neat how uh, if you have time to read through this it sound you can almost hear the voice of uh, Christopher Lee reading this it's you know it's quite appropriate for this book the way the description the tone of the text the writing fantastic I'm digging it okay so far so good okay so let's see what's going on here so we have uh, a car driving um, and hit a pothole or something on the road that damaged the car and this is where you get to see the character so I guess inside the car you know at least there is a genie and then there's a Frankie and then you read here they say Frank Drake okay so I guess the guy's name is Frank Drake and that's genie the girl and then we are introduced to a third character Clifton okay all right okay and here you see a little backstory well not backstory but you see the, the dynamic between the three look like genie used to date Clifton so there's some kind of uh, romantic tension there between the three of them and now she's dating Frank Okay, so the car broke down and looked like they have to uh, find their way into the town. And here is uh, the town. Look like people are sitting around talking about um, the arrival of the tourists. So far, you know, we don't really have a clue what's going on yet. We heard about the Baron Castle here. but. Nothing yet. Okay, so you see the three of them finally made their way into the town on foot and they got there. And now we know they are in Transylvania. Okay, home of Dracula. Now we know. What's next? Okay, and look like they are looking for someone that can help them get to the castle since their car broke down and um, they found someone that's willing to give them a carriage ride into the castle to the castle okay so far the art is pretty good not as tight is I would like to see Gene Colan uh, does it, but uh, you know, Gene is pretty good inker himself. So you know, sometimes when you see something that is not as tight, I can only guess it has more to do with uh, deadline. It's never easy for an artist to uh, draw pencil and ink himself, even though he might be the best suitable inker for his own penciling. Okay, so you look like they are making their way with the carriage ride to the castle. And uh, I guess the carriage ride didn't go all the way to the castle. And they have to uh, walk the rest of the way. Okay, here's once again. Oh, here you see that the Clifton is trying to make the move on Genie again 
But she said it is over. Move on, buddy. Okay. All right. Let's see what's next here. So you see uh, Frank doing some reflecting here. Okay. Okay. So here is you get the backstory to fill in the character. Okay, apparently Clifton and Frank was good friend, and they are running into some money issues. Okay, and as they sit around and talk about what to do, Frank brought up his inheritance and his roots as far as having a castle. Hmm. Okay, so Clifton is intrigued, of course, and he wants to find out more about this so-called castle. And right here is when Frank revealed that he's a descendant of uh, Dracula. Okay, so as you can read here, look like Clifton have an idea of how to make money on this castle. Okay, so all right, so this page basically gives you some more back um, background on Drake and it, and his uh, I guess route to Dracula. Okay, so you get a better details, better understanding of his connection to Dracula, his cousin. All right. Okay, right here you can see that Clifton is talking about turning the castle into some kind of museum, some kind of tourist thing to make money. Okay, since they are broke. I need money, sounds like a good idea, right? Let's go to Transylvania and take over the castle and turn it into some kind of tourist attraction. And there you go, here's a shot of them. Just getting the view of the castle, up close. Okay. Okay, so they made it inside the castle. And of course, what you would never have Dracula without bats, right? So there we go. Actually, that's a pretty beautiful drawing right there. I like that. That looked really good. That's Gene Colon at his best right there. Okay, look like uh, Gene is not a big fan of this uh, place. He's kind of freak out with the bats and all that stuff. And uh, let's see. Oh, look like Clifton is up to something. Okay, so Clifton break off from the pack and venture out on his own. And then he stepped on something, broke through the ground and fell into something below. Ah, you see why I use the reader's copy because sometimes the the air in this area is so powerful that it can flip the page by itself. Kind of appropriate for a Dracula ghost. <laughs> okay, um, okay, so here you have um, Clifton making his way down some kind of uh, alley dungeon, the staircase. Hmm, look like he has other plan for um, this castle. Sound like he have a plan to take out Frank and take his girl back. So it's not all about you know trying to help Frank making some money. It's, sound like he trying to get rid of Frank, take the girl, and take the castle. Okay. All right. So he make his way. Oh, here we go. Into the coffin. Alrighty. 
Aha. Dracula. Looked like Clifton found something. Cool. So far, so good. Okay. Looked like he decided to pull the stake out. I wonder why. I think it would have been more appropriate if this was more like thought balloons instead of talking because he's not going to be talking out loud like this. I wonder why the writer didn't do uh, thought balloons for this because I think it would have been more appropriate. Okay, oh, this, this is what happened. You pull the stake out and guess what? Dracula come back. Yowza. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at that. I like that. That look great. Oh, beautiful shot right here. Classic Gene Colon right there. Okay, so it looked like he awoke Dracula because he pulled the stake out and then he's trying to shoot Dracula with a gun. And it ain't gonna work. So I see uh, Dracula beat him up and uh, I guess chuck him inside some kind of cave, you know, a tunnel, uh, some kind of well. I guess this is where. He must have opened this thing right here and then throw Clifton inside. Maybe a temporary prison. Okay. So now we get to see Dracula now. Look pretty good. Beautiful drawing. Oh, I love this panel. Okay. So here you have Genie and Frank still making their way through the castle. Still being spooked out by bats and then whoa a big bat come out and voila we have Dracula okay and look like he's using his hypnotic eyes to draw a genie to him okay. uh, look at Frank to the rescue give her a good whack knock her out And then he uh, chased away Dracula with the, the pendant. Okay. Alright. Okay, so he's... Uh, let's see. Not much going on here. Oh, looked like Dracula left the castle and went on... to get his first victim, I guess. Okay. Uh -huh. So now the town people found the victim and they are saying, okay, Dracula is back, the vampire is back, it's time to go get him. Alrighty, so here you go, you get the pitchfork and the fire, everything, time to go burn down the castle. Okay, here you go, Dracula back at the castle. Uh huh, he's back trying to get Chini. Uh -huh. and once again, Frank show up. Uh, Looks like Frank have the good old mirror here. Okay, so we have a good fight. Ooh, nice shot. Beautiful picture here. Okay, he's trying to... Oh, look like, look like Dracula is winning this fight. Okay, so he, uh, he must have knocked Frank out. Uh, he did. And then, uh, okay, look like the town people is getting close to the castle, and he got Chini to toss away the crucifix. And then, okay, so okay, so the town people run toward the castle, and they found the crucifix. Uh, not maybe not the same one that she wore around her neck because it looked much bigger, but anyhow. They decided that it's time to burn down the castle. So here you can see here, castle is burning. Dracula is carrying Genie, I guess. Away. And then Frank woke up. 
and once again he use his pendant to chase away Dracula and carry Genie to safety. Okay, so the castle is burnt, toasted, and he got Genie here, and he thinks she's dead. But no, don't cry. Uh huh. You never die, never. Uh -huh. So now Genie is a vampire. And that's it, that's the end. Okay. Okay, I got it. Okay, so what do I think? Um, as a teenager, if I just flip through that book, I would say it was okay. You know, I, I liked the art, uh, the writing was okay, the story was nothing special. I mean, I, I guess I'm familiar enough with uh, Dracula that everything that happened in the book so far was something that I would have expected out of a Dracula comic book. So overall, I guess it met my expectation. To be honest, uh, I don't think it wowed me. Uh, the art was definitely very pleasing to look at. Uh, the writing was okay. Um, and I was pleased. I definitely was would be happy that I bought the book and read it. Uh, as far as collecting the series, I would say that would be up in the air, you know. Uh, knowing myself when I was 12 years old, I would like superhero comic books. So it would be hard for me to sway into other genre at this moment. But if the covers of number two looks anything this beautiful, I might, you know, it might be enough to lure me in, as well as having Gene Colon as an artist, that never hurt, as far as getting me to buy the book. So I'm more inclined to buy number two here compared to buying number two of uh, Luke Cage Hero for Hire. So that's it. That's my uh, review. Uh, let's jump back to current time. Um, you know, now that you know, it was years later that you know, the first time I bought this reader's copy, it actually came with a collection I bought. And um, I had no idea it was Neil Adams art. You know, it looked good, but I really didn't have an inkling that it was Neil Adams work on the cover. And then years later, I found out and I was not surprised. And he did a few beautiful covers for this series. Um, one of these days, um, when I do a, a video on just Tomb, Tomb of Dracula series, I think you will see some of the other great covers that Neil Adams did. Very, not as well known as most of his work, but they are beautiful. Uh, so, stepping back in time, and uh, to, stepping back to current time, I would say that it was a, a good read. You know, I, I think the, the older me would have enjoyed the book more because I, I understand and appreciate the horror genre more today than I did, you know, if I was 10 or 12 years old. And the art inside is beautiful. You know, certainly it's not Gene Colan at his best. Uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, time constraint may be part of the reason why some of the panels didn't look as good as I would expect from Gene. But overall, it was very well drawn. Um, and well written, you know, and, and I also found out that, you know, it was not uh, a story by Conway. It was written basically by uh, Roy Thomas and Stan Lee. Um, you know, Conway was brought in to basically put the dialogue in the panel. You know, basically it was drawn already with the plot by uh, Lee and uh, Thomas. So... It's not bad. Overall, a good read, and uh, you know, I give this a thumbs up. You know, compared to a Hero for Hire, I think this introduction was a better one uh, in almost every way. You know, from the, the art as well as the story, I like it. And uh, thanks for watching my Time Warp review.